In this video, we're going to go over a rough explanation of what is the shell method. And at the end of this video, I'll talk briefly about uh, how, how to use it. So here's the idea. I won't go through a full derivation. It's kind of messy and tedious, but let's at least talk about the idea. So this is our axis. We can say this is the x-axis, maybe. And now I'm going to attempt to draw a shell. So we have something that looks like this, and then something like this, really nice and pretty. And then we have a little circle here and a circle here. And I'm going to draw a line going from here to here and a line going from here to here. So we have this shell sitting on the x-axis. Note a shell is basically a cylinder with a hole. So if you have a cylinder like this, okay, let me just attempt to draw my cylinder, and you put a hole in it, that's a shell. So a shell is a cylinder with a hole. So with the holes, if you took a drill and you drilled a hole in it, uh, you would get uh, a, a shell. So there's our, our little beautiful shell standing up. And so what we do is we draw a rectangle. Let me use a different color. So I'm going to take a rectangle here. This is our blue rectangle. Okay. And it looks something like this. Okay. I'm going to fill it in just to make it a little more clear. And so you'll notice if you take this rectangle and you spin it about this axis, you're going to get a shell. Right? So if you take this rectangle up here and I spin it, uh, you can imagine it creating this three-dimensional shell. So there's a couple things that are important here that are extremely important in terms of like how you actually do the problems. So the first thing is H. So I should have used a different color, but that's H. So H... Okay, h could be a function of x or it could be a function of y. It depends. Um, if you have a vertical rectangle, let me just go ahead and tell you now, it's important. You have functions of x, always, no matter what. It doesn't matter what method you're using, discrete shell, vertical rectangles, you always have a function of x. If you have a horizontal rectangle, you always have functions of y. This is like super key. I'll probably make another video later just, just emphasizing this because it's actually that important. So h, h in this... Uh, in this problem, in this setup, is the height of the rectangle. So it's like the longer part. They use H uh, in textbooks for uh, the height. So height. Obviously here, it's not the height, it's like the length because it's laying down. But if you have a vertical rectangle, it would be the height. So it's the longer part. Okay, it's the longer part of your rectangle. Then uh, W is going to be this little piece here. This will be W. That's like the width of your um, of your uh, of your rectangle. That's going to turn into a DX after we integrate. And then here's the part that I'm skipping, and that's why I said this is going to be a rough derivation. This here we're going to call P. So P is called the average radius. Average radius. So to come up with P formally, what you would do, let me use a different color to attempt to explain it, is you would take this length and this length and add them up and divide by two and you would do some math and you would get P. So it's actually it's actually the average radius. Okay, so P is called the average radius. So if you spin this rectangle, you get the volume of a shell. Volume of shell. And that's actually equal to 2 pi PHW. So W being the width of the rectangle. So as before in the disk method, when we introduce a function and we put a picture into place, uh, the W becomes like your delta X. The 2 pi ends up getting factored out, and the P, in it, the P and the H end up becoming functions of X. So let me give you a picture here. Say this is the Y axis, and this is the X axis. Let me show you exactly uh, what, what P and H would be in, a, in an actual problem. So say we have this region here like this, and like this, and like this. And let's say we're spinning it about the y-axis, and then here's our rectangle. Okay, here's our beautiful little rectangle. In this case, h is the height. It's a vertical rectangle, so it's a function of x. 
and P is the distance from the skinny part of the rectangle to the axis of revolution, always, every single time. Again, P is the distance from the skinny part of the rectangle to the axis of revolution. And it's also a function of x because we have a vertical rectangle. And let's say this is A and this is B. So we're taking this area and we're spinning it uh, about this y-axis. So we're getting some 3D object. And the volume formula, in this case, would be 2 pi A to B, P of x, h of x, right, because the p and the h stay, the 2 pi comes out, and the w becomes like your delta x, so dx. And again, I skipped uh, all of the math uh, to show this, and also to show p, it's really, really tedious. So where is p? Is it, is it, is it here? Is it here? No, it's actually right in the middle, hence the name, um, it's, it's the average, it's the average radius. Um, I hope this video has been helpful, and the videos that follow, uh, I'll give you some tips to actually um, compute uh, volumes using the shell method, and then we'll do lots of examples. But that's the rough idea of how you come up with a formula. That's it.